Welcome to iNerdius and an interview with my friend Dave Wynell, uh, an expert on Star Trek fiction. <laughs> and we're going to talk about 10, the 10 best Star Trek novels according to David Wynell, or at least Dave's 10 favorites. <laughs> yeah. So um, we'll go ahead and start. I mean, just we'll, we'll let people know that we. We attempted to do this once before, and it didn't record, so we're doing it again. <laughs> and you did hit record, right? What's that? And you did hit record, right? I did hit record this time, yes. I, I, I have the acknowledgement, and I heard the voice say recording. So, And also it says recording up in the uh, up in the corner there. So so we'll go ahead and start. So what, what we'll do is we're we're going to i guess we're starting at number 10 and working our way up to number 1 is that kind of the idea more or less or are they in no particular order in no particular mm -hmm. order okay and um what we'll do is you'll tell me what you know give me the title and the author and then uh what was it about more or less and then why why you liked it so go ahead and let's start with the first one uh, the first one probably a uh, three book story arc called My Brother's Keeper, which is the original series, and it was basically the early relationship between Kirk and Gary Mitchell from their academy days up until after Gary's death in Where No Man Was Done Before. Okay, and is there is there anything else to the story? Is it just sort of their academy days, or is there something else going on, or what? Their backstory about how they became friends. Okay. And what they've gone through in the years on the Farragut and Lexington Constitution and then Enterprise. Okay. And so what what why do you like it? It's just an early, you know, history that you don't really hear in a lot of the other novels. You know, like mm -hmm. how did they become friends? Why did they become friends? Right. And does it um sorry i'm going to see if i can get a little more there we go uh, a little more light um and it's you said it's a three book it's actually a three yeah. book series yeah okay well that's cool who wrote them that is um where are we and by christopher l bennett oh, okay cool and so that's original series but the um I guess the other characters in the original series do they do they make appearances in it or not? Oh yeah, they're they're there. It's just they're more background okay. than out in the foreground. Oh cool. All right. Um. All right. What's the next one? Uh, a book called *A Horror Song*, which is by Janet Kagan. The original series, obviously. Mm -hmm. Um, basically a planet. Of sea line bipeds is dying out from some disease, and Uhura basically finds their relatives on another planet that actually have the cure through uh through songs really, and they're like um. Kind of like the Klingon songs that, you know, battle songs and everything, but these are along the same idea. Oh, okay. That's pretty cool. And that is, um, obviously, it's a horror, so it's original series. And what did you, why do you like it so much? It had a horror out in the uh, foreground more than she usually is. Mm hmm Which really... She needed to be. It's a character yeah, who boy. wasn't normally. Um, she wasn't uh, featured a lot, obviously, yeah, that, that, in, in the series, and then I guess also in the fiction. I guess she's not really featured a lot in the fiction too. Oh, no, they actually just did a brand new one, um, about six months ago. It was really good. It wasn't bad. I really enjoyed it. Basically, Uhura was on a uh, mission, lost all of her memories, 
Like okay. Starfleet Academy, the Starfleet years, everything. Huh. Basically took Spock and Kirk to find her and to you know, help her regain all of her memories. Okay, that sounds interesting. Okay, so so first one, my brother's keeper, second one, Uhura's song. What's the third one? Uh we'll go with yesterday's song. Okay. I actually do have that one in my collection, so <laughs> um so what uh so what is that one about? Basically it's uh a sequel to an original series episode where uh Kirk and McCoy have been transported back to an ice age. And not Kirk and McCoy, sorry, Spock and McCoy. And Spock had basically reverted to Vulcans of five thousand years in the past. And it sired a child on this woman without knowing it. Right. And some cave drawings from the planet's history you know, were found, and one of the cave drawings was a young Vulcan boy. Well, Spock was like, that was something. I have. <laughs> they had to use the gateway of forever to go back to the planet because the planet didn't exist anymore. Oh, wow. To go back and bring the kid to. Uh, the present. Mm -hmm. So what? What did you? What did you like so much about that one? It was very Spock centric. Mm -hmm. Uh, it it hit on uh, Vulcan relationships, Vulcan lifestyles. Yeah. Family family relations and uh, how Vulcan families are. Yeah. I liked it. Is that the one that I got you to read way back when that got you into Star Trek? Uh -huh. So that was the first one, huh? Interesting. Yeah. Um, one of the things I remember liking about it was I like that you got a you got to see you got to see McCoy and Spock together. Yeah. Without without Kirk being around, because usually oh, he was there. Oh, was he? I didn't remember that. Spock and McCoy joined them through the gateway. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. I, 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 I knew they were in the I knew they were in the TV series, the TV show together. I didn't I forgot that they were in the book together. They actually needed the power of Vulcan's um power of influence to get Starfleet Command to allow them to use the gateway. Oh, okay. Huh. Well, that's pretty cool. So, so we got My Brother's Keeper or Her Song and Yesterday's Son. What would be the next one? Probably Boogeyman, which is a Next Generation storyline. Okay. Oh, and uh, who wrote Yesterday's Son? That was was that Crispin? Yeah. Okay. Um. So Boogie Boogeyman. Yeah. And what's what's that one about? Basically, it's Wesley Crusher centric. There is so much hate for Wesley Crusher in the world; it's ridiculous. Yeah. And but this was, you know, Wesley had inadvertently, uh, while well, doing a school project on the Enterprise, it re released these alien nanite type things into the computer system, and it was taken over the ship. Then it was. Basically, causing all sorts of havoc. Yeah. So, what 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 is it about that one that you like so much? Well, it was Wesley centric because we really didn't know anything about him. Right. How can you hate on somebody you don't know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, I mean, for what we actually play, kind of a, a whiny snobby brat, which was basically what he was. <laughs> That's just good acting. That's just good acting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I remember that when that when that came out, and a lot of people were not too thrilled with that character. And I was like, well, just you know, I mean, they're trying to do something different. People don't like it when 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 uh, big franchises like to do something different. You know. Um, well, I mean, an android on the bridge. Come on. Right. Going on on the bridge of a Federation starship. Give me a break. Right. Right. <laughs> But now they're like two of the biggest, most popular characters in the franchise. Right. 
And who wrote that one? That was Mel Gildan. Gildan. Okay. So we got those four. What's the fifth one? Uh, Tears of the Singers, which is an original series. Right. And That's what's that uh, another Uhura centric story. Oh, okay. Because of her musical talents, mm -hmm. um, she was assigned to protect this alien species. Um, there were pirates out. Uh, killing this species because when they died, they shed these tears that turned into valuable gemstones mm -hmm. that were uh, more valuable than even diamonds or rubies. Yeah. So she was trying to save them from extinction from pirates, and she did really well. Yeah. And what what is it about that one that you like so much? Again, just do horror being out in the back, you know, in the foreground instead of just being a, you know, not even a secondary, but like fourth character in the back and over here. Right, right. Yeah, I I get the impression that you kind of like it when the the minor characters get get their chance in the spotlight and. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It expands the it expands the universe of Star Trek, you know. Yeah, because I mean. Just concentrating on Kirk, Spock, and McCoy, or Picard, Riker, and Data, or Janeway and Chakotay, or Archer and DePaul. Who am I missing? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Cisco and... Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Kira. I mean, it's, just, you know, it, it's not just about them. It's everybody. Right, right. Everybody needs their... You know, fifteen minutes. You know, fifteen seconds of fame. Right, right. Um. So, what would be the what would be the one the next one number six? Uh, trials and tribulations by yeah. Diane Carey. Yeah. The planet's most popular and favorite original series episode is the uh, Trouble with Tribbles. Right. Well, DS9 had done a um, time travel episode where they were accidentally sent back in time by, turns out to be Arn Darwin, who was a Klingon in disguise, who was trying to derail a uh, uh, settlement on a planet by the Federation. And um, he found a way to get himself sent back to warn his younger self, hey, you're about to get found out, pal. I mean, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, I like how they actually brought you know, the, the newer characters into the scenes of the original series. They got you know, Cisco and them into old-style Federation uniforms. Huh. So and so, what do you you like about that? Just because it connects the two. Well, the yeah, but the book itself went into more detail. Okay. I mean, you can only go into so much detail in TV or movies. The mm -hmm. books just expand it. They can add stuff that you probably couldn't put in the show, where it was right. too much time. Right. Right. Well, you certainly can't have you know the thoughts of characters in a Star Trek show. You you can only get that in a novel anyway. So. Oh yeah. Um, and so what would be your, the next one, number seven? Book called Q and Law mm -hmm. by Peter David. And that's Next Generation? Yeah. And uh, what's that about? Was, uh, basically Q and Luxana Troy. Uh, Q wanted to, uh, study... Betazoid women, so he allowed Lexana to fall for him. <laughs> so she did. And then Q even gave her some of his uh, powers to mm. see how she would deal with it. And she dealt with it by beating the absolute snot out of him when uh, he was like, you insolent, you know, female, who do you think you're fighting with? Yeah. I'm Q. Like, yeah, well, I'm on the Troy. What do you like about that one? Well-known characters in the foreground 
being with Q and Loxana. Right. We don't right. really know that much about Loxana. Mm-hmm. There's a whole... I think it's fourth book um, arc on Q. Separate from this? Huh? Separate from this one? Yeah. Okay. So you, you learn about Q in that one. Okay. Okay. So uh, actually called the Q Continuum. Go figure. Is that also by Peter David? Oh, I have no idea. I'll look it up later. No big deal. Um, okay. So what would be uh, the eighth, the eighth book? Uh, Metamorphosis, which is a uh, next generation storyline. Right. Uh, What's that about? Basically, everybody's favorite android being given his uh, fondest wish of being turned human. Mm -hmm. Nobody on the Enterprise can recognize him. They couldn't exactly do a DNA test on him because there's no DNA in whatever fluid androids have. Right. So he basically had to go through all the retraining and everything to even be able to be on the bridge. So he goes back to the academy and all that, or? No. He's okay. just, now they just give him a refresher course. Mm -hmm. If all of his memories somehow were still intact. But he can't have the, so if he's human, he's not going to be as strong. He's not going right. to be able to, like, do calculations as quickly and all and of that. He's not going to be as fast. And does that all come out in the book? Yeah. I think a lot. Oh, there you go. Okay. You're you're back. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it all came out in the book. And one of the things, Worf was retraining him on, uh, uh, you know, phaser fire and, you know, making sure you still could aim perfectly and that's when they discovered and they realized Data you're left handed shoot with the other hand and it was perfect <laughs> that's pretty clever <laughs> so that's metamorphosis um, yeah. so what is the I guess we're down to the, the um, ninth book yeah the Vulcan Academy Murders by Gene Laura. Yeah. This was more a science and medical type book, but it was also um, background romance, I guess. Huh. Well, initially what happened was one of the crewmen on the Enterprise was injured. I uh, had uh, major neurological in, uh, injuries in a uh, away mission. A Vulcan and human doctor on Vulcan were coming up with this uh, process of regenerating nerves so mm. that you know people can be you know can live with you know can come back to being alive. Right. Spock knew about it because his mother was already undergoing treatment for it. Okay. So he gets them to Vulcan, gets the crewman set up with the thing, and all of a sudden, uh, there's another person that's on Vulcan that needs to be put in the uh, treatment. But what nobody realized was that an assistant of Sarex, who was madly in love with him, was trying to kill Amanda. So she kept making it seem like computer failures were killing all these patients. But she didn't know about the third patient. She only knew about the crewman and Amanda. So when she thought she had killed Amanda, she was running into the room to Sarah, professing her love, and now they can finally be together. And then you know, suddenly realizing, wait, Amanda is standing right there. <laughs> uh, so yeah, you... that was... I liked it. Uh, she tries to kill Kirk because he uncovers what she's trying to do. Uh, it just doesn't end well for her. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So what is it about it that really works for you in this this particular book? The intrigue. It was, yeah. They were writing it like a uh, whodunit. Yeah. I've never really been a mystery reader so much, but they had written it like a whodunit. Which is kind of cool to do something like that, you know, in the Star Trek universe, which, you know, when you think about it, you could do any kind of a, any kind of story can happen in the Star Trek universe. You could have a romance story, you could have a mystery, you could have horror, you could have all those things, you know. Um, I kept it covered. <laughs> yeah. So that's the Vulcan Academy murder. So what's the, what's the next one? There's actually four books. Yeah. That they have recently come out with. And they're the fifth one coming out in September. Mm -hmm. Uh the autobiography of James T. Kirk by David Goodman. The autobiography of Sean Luke Picard by David Goodman. The autobiography of Catherine Janeway by Una McCormick. And the autobiography of Mr. Spock by Luna McCormick. So what are these about? I mean, do they have, is it just an autobiography or do they have like a, do they have an ongoing plot that's going through them or, and so do they connect? it's just, you know, their early years of growing up and yeah. going through the academy and things that happened in their lives all through up until, you know, the time of their passing. Mm -hmm. Oh wow! Well, no, two of them are still alive. Yeah. And well, what do you the like? The other thing about the uh, one for Spock was that the way the writer uh, wrote it was as a a journal or a letter written to Captain Picard from Spock. Yeah. Huh. Why Picard? He's the last captain he met. Oh, okay. Okay. Huh. <laughs> so this this is basically I mean, so they're taking that in the, the movies into consideration then. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, okay. So that's 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 interesting. That's pretty cool. So what about um out of those, which ones do you think would be the the, the most interesting one for for people into Star Trek to read? Well, I guess it depends on which is your favorite show and your favorite character, right? I so. mean, I prefer Next Gen. I'm probably going to get a lot of hate over that, but yeah, I prefer <laughs> Next Gen. Um, so you like the Picard that's... one? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the next one, the next book they're writing that's coming out in August or September is the autobiography of Benjamin Sisko. Okay. That'll be interesting. Do you think they're gonna? Do you think they're gonna continue with other characters? Excuse me, with other characters from Star Trek? Oh no, I hope so. I mean, there's not too many captains left that everybody really associates with. Um, they True. might. No, they've got to do Archer. They have to do Archer. Well, and also like some some of them became captains later on. Like Sulu becomes a captain later on, right? And uh, yeah. So that's kind of that could be kind of interesting. And McCoy, you don't have. I mean, Spock was Spock ever a captain? I don't remember actually. Yeah, he was a captain of the Enterprise. Okay. But he said that he was only accepting the promotion and the captaincy as a training officer. Right. So, so theoretically, any any character who went on to become a captain could be um, included in that. But I would, you know, I think it would make sense for them to also include like McCoy and. Um, you know, other characters that weren't necessarily captains. So Yohora, I mean, could be could be interesting. I think uh, it would be interesting if they did do one on Scott. Yeah. That's um, one. I don't know about Harriman. I don't know about Harriman. Well still. But, uh, yeah. But Garrett, maybe. So those so those are your top 10. And I know you, before we talked, you mentioned um, out of the adaptations, you know, the movie and TV show adaptations, your favorite was uh, The Wrath of Khan. Um, that one in Voyage Home. Oh, that one in yeah. Voyage Home. I never, I've read Rat, the Wrath of Khan novelization. I've never read the Voyage Home novelization. What is it about those that differentiates them from the other ones? Well, the Voyage Home had more detail. Right. That actually were written into the movies, but 
were cut. Okay. Like, uh, Sulu had met his three times great grandfather, was he like 12 at the time, but mm -hmm. and the um, the guy that was in charge of the uh plastics company where they were buying the uh sheets of plastic to make the whale tank in the book actually was the guy that invented transparent aluminum. Oh. And then the and in the book, Scott was like, "Oh my God, you're Marcus! Oh my God, all your inventions and all and all." <laughs> and the guy's like, "Well, I have like three or four patents, but." And McCoy's <laughs> like, "Scott, stop, stop!" Right. <laughs> That's pretty and, cool. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's literally gushing over this guy, and he doesn't even know what he's talking about. <laughs> and I guess it's the same deal with Wrath of Khan. There's a lot more. There's a lot more background information about their life on that planet, and. Yeah, it's not a lot of stuff about the life on the on uh, Teddy Alpha, but uh, it it just it did sort of explain the whole uh you know how does Khan know Chekhov? Oh right, that's right. Yep, yep. I forgot about that. Yeah, and people have been screaming about this for years. He wasn't on the other. No. He wasn't on the bridge. Right. <laughs> yeah, two different was things. Going the specs on the ship and was looking at all the crew members and everything. Chekhov mm -hmm. was on a lower deck somewhere. So right. he saw him. Right, exactly. Yeah, I love I love when people, you know, they 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 it's like binary thinking. Like he wasn't on the bridge, therefore he wasn't on the enterprise, but that's not necessarily true. So that's a good point. I, that, so that one was written by uh, Vonda McIntyre. Um, I believe so. Who wrote the um, Voyage Home one? Not sure. I'll look it up. I'll put it in the thing. So just out of curiosity, because I, I, the last time we talked, you did sort of mention that you felt that there was a, a one writer who kind of stands head and shoulders above the rest when it comes to writing Star Trek novels. Is that Who is that again, and why? why do you think that? I think even McCormick has been doing a top notch, you know, run on it. And also, um, Mac. It was Mac? I'm horrible with names, but the last name I believe is Mac. Mm -hmm. And he does a really good job of storytelling. Yeah. There was one new author who I don't remember her name, but she really did not do her research. Because through the entire Next Gen book, she had Picard calling Riker William through the whole book. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> once in a while, he'll say Will, but it's mostly number one. Never once did he say William. Right, right. Like, hey, William, uh, you know, no. Yeah, and in in, so you had mentioned you also liked uh, what's her um, the woman who wrote tri Trials and Tribulations. Yeah, is that Diane? Um, can't read the my handwriting here. What is her last name? Read mine either. Uh, Diane Terry. Yeah. Yeah. She's really good. She's really good. Yeah. She does really good work on. Um, and AC Crispin is a name you see a lot in Star Trek, and obviously Peter David is a name you see a lot in Star Trek. Not lately. He hasn't been writing any. Um, oh, okay. Now, he does have an entire Star Trek series. He hasn't written anything for it for a while, but it is his series. Nobody else is even allowed to mention his characters. What is it called again? It's Final Frontier. No, first, shoot, what is it? New Frontier. Sorry, New, New Frontiers. Frontier. It, was, it, it was set in the next-gen uh, galaxy. You're introduced to them by Picard. It was interesting how, you know, they came up with these new characters and were able to, you know, embed them so well. Like, you know, you didn't feel like they were new. You felt like they'd been there all along. That's a great, that's a, that's one of the great things that Star Trek has done is they've been able to like move away from, you know, like, like Star Wars gets a lot of criticism for it always being about the Skywalker family and you kind of want to. And then, luckily, they have gotten away from that lately with Andor and um, uh, at least most of the Mandalorian, if not all of it, you know. Um, and that's been cool, you know. And hopefully, they'll continue exploring other things. And start, but Star Trek's always been able to do that. So, how many, 
How many Star Trek books have you read so far? Seven hundred eighty. Seven hundred eighty. How many have they published? Seven hundred eighty-two. <laughs> so you have two more to read. Well, the other the other two are basically the um, manuals to the Enterprise. Oh. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I used to have one of those, actually. I think I had them. I don't know what happened to them. Yeah, yeah, they, things get moved around and lost over the years. Is there anything coming up in Star Trek that you're really looking forward to? I've been hearing the rumors of a new Star Trek movie. Uh, of course, I've been hearing it for a couple of years now. Yeah. Um, uh, Strange New World should be coming back in January. And they have already been approved for season three. Mm -hmm. uh, I love... Yeah, I'm on a lot of pages on Facebook, and People pick the silliest stuff to gripe about. <laughs> I just saw one this morning. Why are worse teeth so clean and so straight? <laughs> and they're pearly white. Why are you worried about that? It's I mean, worse. he's a Starfleet officer. There are probably regulations about keeping your appearance. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah, yeah. People need to, I don't know. They need to find something to uh, to talk about, I guess, when it comes to this stuff. <laughs> Down to said in the uh, Saturday Night Live skit years and years ago. Get a life. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, a lot of uh, a lot of Star Trek people got offended by that skit. I actually thought it was pretty funny. I don't, oh, yeah. you know, I mean, it's got to be a weird feeling for an actor to just get a job doing a TV show, and especially for the original series folks because. This level of fandom wasn't really a thing back then, and they were kind of the first ones to really experience that, I think, you know. And um, so for them, it was like it's just a t it's just an acting job. <laughs> yeah. Now somebody, when Strange New World started, somebody went up to Ethan Peck and uh, Anson Mount and said, "Hold on." Yeah. You are about to explode so we'll have to yeah we'll have to do something like this for um star wars novels which i know you read those as well we could even do like a you know the second 10 of star trek since there's so damn many of them that you've read <laughs> you know and i know there's more than more than 10 or 11 good ones right so oh, yeah um that'll actually be good to do as well especially if you know if we get a lot of people watch this and seem to want to hear more about it you know i mean i it's it's amazing to me. I've read, you know, probably in my lifetime, maybe 1,100 books. <laughs> and to have read 780 Star Trek novels is pretty, I mean, admittedly, they're mostly, they're pretty easy reads, but still, that's a, that's a hell of a commitment. I mean, and. I've got, because I just did a count like last week. I have over 2,400 books on my Kindle. Wow. Oh, here, before we go, we only have, we have almost just about a minute left. So um, another idea for a video I want to do with you at some point is you've met a lot of the Star Trek actors and um, and and other actors as well. And and, and it'd be fun to do a, a, a sort of um, going through the, the, the various Star Trek actors that you've met and what your impressions were and and how that went. But that'll be we'll talk about that, you know, offline at some point. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, all right, man. Appreciate it. This is my interview with uh, David Wynell and talking about his top 10 Star Trek books, Live Long and Prosper, my friend. And we'll talk later on.